today's hottest style trend is stacking bracelets, whether you wear one or stack a dozen. I'm here with Meredith Roddy, and we're going to make three different types of bracelets. These are some great projects, Meredith. Super easy to do. Thanks, Katie. I hope so. Yeah, I think they'll be great for people to make. All right, well, let's start with the first one. We're going to make a multi-strand design. We're going to make a multi-strand illusion style design using beading wire and crimp beads. Okay, so how do we get started? All right, well, we get started by um, cutting about a six inch length of beading wire. And you're going to do the end by taking a two, size two crimp tube and using the crimping tool, standard crimping tool. Okay, and does it matter what size beading wire you use? It doesn't matter necessarily what size beading wire you use, but I like using a .024 beading wire. Oh, okay, either... so pretty substantial. Yeah, so then you can see it. Yeah, you because get a I think that the, metallic shine, um, too. Exactly, and the wire really stands out yeah. in this design. So here you can see I have um, crimped the end of the crimping of the crimp tube onto the wire, and then you're going to go ahead and crimp um, a size one crimp tube to capture your bead on either side. Okay, so the two is at the end, it's a little bit bigger, has more surface contact, helps hold on the clasp. That's all I remember it. And then size yes. one is hold the beads in place. Exactly, okay. because the, here you don't want the, the crimp tube to be the focal part right. of the design. You want the wire and the beads to really stand out on the design. So here I've gone ahead and crimped my first one on and I just do that flat. I like this, just squish the number ones, especially if they're not holding a clasp. Yeah. Because it really, that's all you need to do in the case of um, holding that bead in place. So now I'm going to go ahead and put that, oops, size one crimp tube on the end of that wire. Okay, and you're using silver, but you could use gold or you other colors. You could use gold, you could use champagne, you could use um, any of the matte colors or even a standard color of wire as well. Okay. And I'm just going to slide this down into place and use, um, like we said, just a regular standard plier to flatten it. Okay. Okay. And so here I have a piece that I've already done. And now what I'm going to do is slide the end into the end of a slide connector. So there are a couple of different kinds of slide connectors. There's one where you can add your own clasp, but then there are some that come with a clasp already attached. So if you want to add your own clasp, you could certainly make it yours. Or if you want to have the whole, um, the whole finding all in one, you can okay. certainly get the one that has the clasp. So more ways of customizing. Exactly. Now, how many strands would you make here? This is six strands, but really you could make less or even more um, depending on what size of the um, connector class mm -hmm. that you're using, or um, your design, um, your interest. Yeah. If you want it to be a really, really uh, substantial design, you can use smaller beads, you could use bigger beads. Well, I love this way that you staggered the beads too, so they're yep. not all bunched up in one place, but it doesn't look like you have to be really specific about measuring it out. I took um, a little cup of beads that I had in my office from Bead things soup. that, exactly, from things I had found, and I put them all together and it actually worked. It looks great. So here, what you're going to do, is slide the um, the crimped crimp okay. into the end of the um, of the finding, and then again use your chain nose pliers to very gently bend. So you just fold your flap closed. Yep, fold the flap closed. And a little trick is on a harder surface, you just want to push it down. Perfect. And it'll lock it right into place. Nice, and then you can attach whatever clasp you want. Attach whatever clasp you want, and of course you want to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And then you can see um, a couple of different examples of different bracelets that yeah, I've made. Yeah, those are so pretty. One where I use all the same um, bicone Yeah, the gold beads. one with the little bicones, mm -hmm. that looks great. It's like a sprinkling. A little, totally a little different. sprinkling, it's a totally, totally different, different. Style. and much smaller. So you can really see those little sparkles come through, mm -hmm. and also um, it will pick up the sparkle of the wire. Yeah, that as looks well. really pretty together. Then I made one using pearls, so it's a little, a little bit of a different look. Um, pearls are very popular right now, well, so it's everyone in loves style, it. Yeah. Yes, pearls are always in style. 
And then the last one I used, again, kind of a different smattering, but I kept my color palette more in the same range. And so that too gives it a little bit of a different Yeah, you know, this would it. be a perfect project. I like your bead soup idea. And also any of these would look lovely with bridesmaids. This would make a great bridesmaid project too. Definitely. And you could, um, I made bracelets, but of course you could do it as a necklace also. And I think that would be same really, technique. really beautiful. All right, well, let's take a look at the next one. So to get started with this sparkly cuff bracelet with the flat memory wire, what you'll do is use, of course, always your memory wire shears to cut a length of flat memory wire. And we all know you don't want to cut the wire with anything else besides the memory wire shears or else you'll ruin your nippers. Um, so you could use one, um, one loop like I did here, or you could certainly do a multiple strand design, as many as you're, you're in the mood for that okay. day. So the way that I like to finish off my memory wire designs, whether it be with flat memory wire or regular memory wire, is with these um, tube, mag these magnet tube clasps. And they're very, very powerful. You can see, you can see yeah. how strong they are to go together. And the wonderful thing about these is if you turn a little loop in the end of your flat memory wire and attach one of these clasps, it is a perfect ending. So, so it makes it all really smooth. It makes it all really smooth. So let me show you really quickly how I do that. Okay. So um, the way that I attach this is I took my round nose pliers and you Turn the loop back so about you're making halfway. A tiny, tiny loop. You're making a tiny, tiny loop. And this takes a little bit of finessing because this memory wire, because it is memory wire, is very, very tough. But that's what you want because you want it to hold its form. Right. It can be, it can be um, manipulated with tools. You just have to, to be patient with it. And then what you need to do is come in here with some flat nose or some chain nose or even bent chain nose pliers and um, Just squeeze that loop together, Squeeze right? the loop together, exactly. And then that will come back through on the clasp and hold it in place. Okay. So that part's hidden inside the tube. That part will be hidden inside the tube, yes. And you could glue it if you wanted to, but it's not necessary at this I point. I don't think it would be necessary to glue it. You could glue other materials into the same um, tube clasps. Okay. But I wouldn't worry about the glue for the memory wire because it, it is such a strong material. Okay, sounds good. So um, to embellish the flat memory wire, there are a lot of really interesting different findings. And I'm going to show you a couple of those today. OK, sounds good. So the first ones that I'm going to show you are the, um, the round cups and the square cups. And what you can do with these is set pointy back stones and flat back stones. So I like to do the pointy back stones in the, um, the square cups and the, round, um, the flat stones with the round cups. So let me show you how easy this is. All right. So here you have the cup, and you're just going to drop the flat stone in. Well, this is a great way to make any custom colors, too. Absolutely. Uh, mother's bracelets with all the different birthstones. School for colors. Grandmothers, school color, team colors, um, colors to match your outfits, anything. So now I'm going to come in here with my chain nose pliers again and just bend one of those prongs down. Now you want to then go to the opposite side. So here you have the opposite side prong and we're just going to go ahead and bend that one down also. And that really works to get that um, centered appropriately Perfect. in the finding. And I'm going to turn it uh, 45 degrees and do this one as well. So always opposite corners. Always opposite corners. And that's how you're gonna, go, going to get a really nice centered stone in Looks your good. finding. Okay, so now these guys will just slide nicely onto that flat memory wire. Okay. So you can do a design with all of these, or you could mix it up. And here I'll show you we have these great um, flat findings. And what they do, again, is slide onto the memory wire. 
and you can use all different kinds of flat backs. So I find in my bead stash that I have all of these really cool stones, but again, do I wanna wire wrap them all? Do I wanna do, use different techniques? This is a fast and easy way of getting them to be, a, to be attached into a final project. And making it totally custom, I love it. Totally custom, which right. is one of my, my favorite things. So here, the way that I'm going to do that is using the, a two-part epoxy. And the thing about the two-part epoxy is you want to mix equal parts. And this particular one is perfect because the equal parts are already measured out. So you just squeeze the whole so tube. So you squeeze the whole tube down. So be ready to do some gluing. Yes. You want to make sure that you have everything lined up because this stuff does, it sets up well, but it does set up fast. So we're going to go ahead and do both parts in a little container here. And you can use a piece of tin foil to do this on, a little, um, a little glass jar. Um, I like to recycle and reuse the packaging from some of the products that I use. And so you're just going to go ahead and mix this up and make sure it mixes up really, really well. And then you can even use that same toothpick or a piece of wire to go ahead and put a little bit, actually what I would do is put a little bit of glue right on the back of my stone. Okay. And then take my, see the magnets stick to everything. Sure <laughs> take this stone and then just lie it, take the finding and lie it right on the back of that stone. Okay. And you want to let it set for, I usually, with all glue, 24 hours. Right. You can never be too safe. Okay. Um, and then you can go ahead and string these all onto the flat memory wire. Okay. And here is a bracelet that I've already gone ahead and done. Um, you can see I've set all of those stones, and it really does not take very long at all to make something that's totally customized. That looks great. Um, and it's so sparkly. Okay, too. now how would you finish the end on this one? So the end on this one, what I would do is since I started with, glue oh, thank you here. so much. Since I started with um, the magnet, I have here my other magnet on the other side, um, just to make sure I have the right polarity, which is always something that you want to be um, careful about. And you can see I left a little bit of um, extra wire just to make sure that everything, um, that I had enough. You never want it to be too short. Right. Too long, no problem. So I'm going to come in here and just clip again with my um, memory wire shears and holding on to that end so it doesn't jump. Clip that off. And I'm going to come here with my round nose pliers and just round that end up. And with my chain nose pliers, bend it down very carefully. And I might have to come back and do that a couple of times just to make sure. And so you that can will really end snug up it inside. Yep. And it will end up eventually snugging inside so you have a great bracelet that is quick to make and easy to take on. That looks and great. Off. And you can yeah. Let's take a look at the back of this one too, because on this one you can see where you've glued all of your findings on. On, so that's what it looks like yeah. on the inside. And then you have a different kind of ending here. I you do have a different on, kind right? of ending. We do have um, a traditional glue-in ending for the flat memory wire. Um, there, there is a traditional ending for the flat memory wire um, bracelets. And this is, this is it right here. You can also use um, your bail making pliers to turn up a ring, which is what I've done over so on this one too. Just to make a loop on there. To make a loop on the All end. Right. Yep. Well, let's take a look at your finished ones and I'll move this stuff out of your way. These are so pretty and I love all the sparkle. You have an example there of some single strand with the round stone and then you have one with the square stone too. Yes, I, um, there, I, I really like also the triple bracelet. Um, it did take a little bit longer to get all of those stones set but I think that the final result really um, speaks for itself. It's There's beautiful. There's so much bling on that. I love it. Um, and on that one, I finished it with a loop. And so you can see it's very easy to um, also customize the ends of your bracelet to, um, if you... Yeah, you could add some charms or be the dangles, right? Absolutely, so or tassel. Pretty. 
Oh, a tassel would be mm -hmm. fun, too. A tassel would definitely be fun. All right, so now we're going to make some charm bracelets. Yes, my, my, my favorite, maybe my favorite. Yes, I love charm bracelets. You can stack them up, you can stack them with any of these other bracelets that we've made today. And the first thing I wanna show, though, is a way that I love to make head pins. I never seem to have enough head pins and I never seem to have the head pins that are matching my project. So you can make these totally custom. So you can make these totally custom. And what I've done, or how I'm going to make them, is with um, 24 gauge wire. You can also use 22 gauge wire and you can use any color to match whatever the design is that you're using. Good idea. So to make the knotted head pin, I'm gonna start with about a three inch piece of wire. Um, we always have scrap wire around in our sure. workshop, so this is a perfect way to use up those pieces. So I like to use the very, very tip of my round nose pliers, and I'm gonna turn that around in a coil. You don't wanna make a spiral, but you wanna make it in a coil. Okay. And I come around about two times. You could do three if you want, but I think two is kind of the sweet spot. And use your index finger to, pull, to point that wire straight up. And this is where I like to say the magic happens. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wire and I'm gonna feed it back through cool. that loop. And then I will take my nylon jaw pliers and put them right against that, that, um, that coil. And take my chain nose pliers and pull that coil so it tightens up in a little knot. And it also straightens the head pin. Perfect. So you're working work hardens, it. Yep, work hardens it a little bit also. And if you need to come back through and just straighten it up a little bit, you can do that also. Yeah, so just use your chain nose pliers. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You have a yeah, head pin. Isn't that so fun? That is fun. So then what you do to finish your charm is take a bead. Again, bead soup. It's the theme of the day. And with the, your round nose pliers, I'm just gonna um, do a really quick wrapped loop. It's always fun to see how everybody does their wrapped loops. I know, everybody does, does it differently. So you're the double plier method. Now I know. I am the double plier <laughs> method, totally. <laughs> All right. And the most important thing, I think, to making a really nice wrap loop is just to come in here and tuck Make that little finish. end in. Okay, so how are we going to attach these to our bracelet? All right, so to attach to the bracelet, we're going to use this braid wire and attach a clasp. So here I have my clasp already attached, and what I'm going to do to get it to here is use these wonderful cord ends. Okay, do you want your glue back? Um, I do not need my glue oh, bag right. quite yet. Okay. Because what I like to do first um, is attach the clasp to the cord ends. Because I think it's easier to get the cord ends lined up the right way when, when you do it that way. Okay. So I'm gonna come in here with my jump, jump rings and use my two pliers again okay. to open up the jump ring. And I'm going to open up the jump ring and attach the clasp on this side. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. And I like to use a smaller jump ring to attach this clasp. So a large one on one side, small on the other? Yep, and you can vary that in any way that you want. You could use a magnet clasp here. You could make your own clasp like I did on this one. That'd be fun too. Yeah, again, it's all about the customi customization. Well, and then you have this beautiful braid wire. This mm -hmm. is 12 gauge, so it's thick, but it's easy to bend because it is has that braided gauge. texture. Yep, and it fits perfectly into these two millimeter um, cord ends. So okay. I will take my glue back now. Okay. Perfect. Oops. And so then with this glue, what you do again is just dab a little bit of glue in there and attach the wire. And this way, since you already have your clasp attached, you can go ahead and attach it here so that your cord ends will be f will be um, facing the right the way. right direction. Yeah. That's a really great so tip. So it takes the guesswork out yeah. of it. And then you could go back and attach your charms with jump rings, right? Absolutely, yep. I would let this dry up again for about 
24 hours. I might, I might be overkill on my drying, but I like to just be doubly, doubly sure. And then you can go ahead and take a jump ring and just attach your charm. Okay, well let's take a look at your finished ones. These are beautiful, what a great idea. And it's quick and easy. These would make great gifts. And again, I took some charms that I had um, in my bead soup stash and I attached them up. There are a couple that would be wonderful for, um, for birthstone bracelets or there's uh, some tassel designs also. All right, well thanks so much, Meredith.